Hey everybody, I'm really excited now that I'm back operating my channel again and one of the first reviews I'm doing is the Mars 4 DLP. Now, DLP, uh, the digital light processing, as you guys know, most people know who are familiar with these machines, it works differently than having the mono screen, there's no screen. So what happens is you don't get the, the blur and the imprecision of having the screen there. So resolution on these machines, they print a lot more accurately. So if the resolution isn't as high, you still get results closer to lower resolution LCD screens. So if people remember, I did a review of the Anycubic um, DLP machine probably a year ago. And there the re resolution I believe was about 77 to 80 microns. And that wasn't quite enough with the DLP technology. Um, it, it had too many steps and, and it wasn't, it just wasn't there yet. And I said, what they need to do is get higher resolution, closer to the resolution that you get on a, a mono screen. And so I'm excited for this because I believe this one, uh, I'll, I'll throw up the stats, but I believe this one's like 57 microns. So it's a lot closer. And with that accuracy, this should actually produce some stunning results. That's what I'm hoping for. So in the box, we have the standard plastic cover. It is, it is already pre-drilled if you want to uh, work your own exhaust. I guess into it if you want to do fan system, which I've done in the past, but I don't really do anymore. So let me get that down. Um, the machine itself, it's, eh, it's not that heavy. That only feels about seven pounds. That means the housing is plastic here. Metal, metal. The arm is metal. That's good. Let's see what the build, uh, build plate. Let's see what the vat looks like. So the vat has two screws holding it in. Oh, by the way, uh, my wife was, we are, was wearing a Fierce Pulse legging. She has, I don't know if you guys remember, people watch the channel. She had actually gotten an endorsement from them almost a year ago, right when my dad got sick with the cancer. So she didn't really get to advertise for them like she should have. Um, so Fierce Pulse, and I have a link in there. If you have women or anyone who likes to wear tights, uh, could be men these days, of course. So they have great tights. Um, but I advise if you go there, wait till they have a sale because their leggings are pretty expensive. They're really good, but they're a little expensive, but they do periodic sales. Should you wait for a sale? And a lot of people have asked me, because I, I know I wear some pretty loud, kind of outrageous clothing, most of it from seemingly from Nike or Under Armour. But I also do wear from some other companies like this. This is from a company called Into the AM, which you can find on the internet, Into the AM. Actually, I'll put a link. Um, they make great stuff. It's by artists, like real artists, not like a big company. And they make really funky, nice patterns and clothes. And they also have some more normalish stuff too, instead of just like the crazy stuff that I wear. But that's from Into the AM. Anyway, um, let's take a look at this. That. So now, see, I love this. This is a small printer, right? Look, look at the build volume, and I'll, I'll flash the stats on the screen. But it's small. Even though it's small, they have feet. I love that you can put it down. Also. The plate is metal. I'm the plate. I keep calling, you know, you know, I've had a, lo a lot of months off and I, I keep calling the vat the, the plate. This vat, th this is, I'm so happy. This vat is metal. It's got the max fill line. It's got little handles and then it's got the feet. So this is what I, I want to see on every single printer. So Elegoo, uh, you nailed the, the um, vat setup. And even looking at, at the, uh, the underside, yeah, those feet are nice and tall, sits really nicely. You can just put it on any surface without worrying about that, about that FEP. Um, so that, that is really good to see. This is metal. Let me see. I, can, I can't, I'm not getting any flex on it, which is good, uh, but we'll see when we're printing. Like I said, the, the, on a DLP machine, uh, the bigger the build, the more the light can spread and, and the resolution goes crappy so you don't want one at this stage you don't want a, a big large build area with dlp it wouldn't be good so you got the standard uh ball joint that elegoo likes to do which still not my favorite i i actually prefer the four screws although i know a lot of people tell me this is easier for them to level it's just if you don't really crank it tight i've had instances where i felt like in removing a print i kind of moved the bill plate a little bit which means you then have to re-level with a four screw system i feel like i never have to re-level but with these and if you do it tight enough it's fine, but I've, I've had it move on me a few times on other printers. So, um, so that's good. That's fine. Okay. What else was in here? We got an adapter in here. I don't need to open that. We've got the standard user manual. We got a card which tells you how to level and can be used for the leveling. To me, 
eyeballing it, it looks a tiny little bit thicker than the paper I use. So I'm going to use paper. I always use paper. I've used, and I made a video on this, but I've used paper on every single printer I've ever leveled and it's worked on every single printer I've ever tested, which is now I think over 50 or 60. I've never had a problem using just plain paper to level it. Um, oh, nice. This comes with, uh, this comes with a filter. Oh, and there's a, there's a plug here to plug in the filter. So one day I should test to see how well these filters work. I guess they do something, but it's nice that it comes with it. Um, and then it comes with some leftover masks from COVID, uh, gloves, your spatula, funnels, which are always good. And then to tighten the ball joint, the screws for the ball joint. And then in case uh, something else pops out, you have extra screws, you have extra screws to the vat here, and you have a little um, Allen wrench for the screws. And of course the plastic scraper, which I always throw out anyway. Okay, so that's it. So there's not much to it. Like I said, it's a light machine. It's only, it's only, uh, this rail looks nice and steady. So I'm hoping that this is gonna produce super duper accurate results. But as you guys know, for me, all the stuff that I just talked about goes out the window when I see how it prints. So that's what we have to check. I'll also, uh, in the few seconds of your time, you'll be looking at a light source test here as well to make sure that light is coming through nice and even. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's, let's look at that and let's look at the prints. I'm really excited to test this one out. So now let's take a look at the light source test. As you can see, light source uh, was perfect here very even all the way to the edges. I found no inconsistencies in the lighting. So I, I kind of expected not to find any and I didn't, so that was good. Um, I was actually surprised how well this printed. Let's look at the pictures, up close high res photos. Um, here I'm gonna put on my nerd glasses to look at these up close because I have to be honest, with the increased resolution, the last DLP I reviewed was the original AnyCubic DLP, which was uh, I believe 72 or 75 uh, micron resolution. And, and this is, I think, 52. Uh, and I like the AnyCubic, except at that resolution, I could see lines, I could see voxels, you know, clearly uh, it, the technology just wasn't up to snuff at that resolution. But if you look at that, if you saw that old review, I said, if this gets higher resolution, it'll be good because it does print super accurate. So I was, I was wondering, was this increase in resolution enough? And the answer is a resounding yes. Like look at these photos, you and I, and you looking at the photos with me, cannot see lines anymore. Like I was actually surprised. I thought there was still gonna be a decent amount of lines that I could see, because I, I thought the resolution might not be high enough to be that smooth. But even looking at it on, uh, this higher magnification on these glasses, it looks amazing. These prints uh, exceeded my expectations and just came out fantastic. Every detail is clear as day. The little hairs that are, you know, where the lines are carved into the beard to show, you know, detail. They, you know, it's very clearly printed out. And like I said, I was I was I wasn't expecting it to be this smooth looking. I mean, these are really really good looking prints. But I'm saying you're looking at high res photos, so you you can see, and the details like on the Tortle Druid that we printed out here, every single scale and these you know these scales are small. Every single scale printed out clearly. You could easily pick these out when you're painting them because how clearly they printed out. I mean, even even the little lines on the teeth. I mean, this this printed out amazing um, just looking at these again I'm, I'm amazed that I, I'm not seeing the layer lines that I thought I was going to see with this DLP printer I mean th this is indistinguishable in many ways from the, the Sonic Mini um, 8K or Sonic Mini 8KS which has a, a 22 micron resolution so this 50 some odd resolution micron resolution on the DLP is actually just as clear. And I'm, I'm trying to see, I really can't see lines, honestly. I mean, this, this, these results are actually a little better than I was expecting. And now what I'm really excited for, as good as this is, I mean, and again, you're looking at the prints with me, um, and these were all printed at 0.02 uh, layer height, and I'll show my settings here. And then I printed this dwarf that I'm gonna show now at 0.01 to see 
how it could handle, you know, 0.01. As, as you can see from the pictures, it, it's, it's great. And on this one, you know, getting up close, there's no, no lines that I can see. It's really came out good. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite, quite impressed with this, with this DLP printer. I guess the only, the only bugaboo on it right now for me, um, is the price. It's more expensive than, uh, I think it's $500, but I think they have a sale going on. So I'll, I'll flash the current price, whatever it is, as I'm making this video, but this printer is fantastic. And I have to say, I was, I am surprised. I already said that, I guess, but I'll say it again. I am, I'm surprised how good it is, but what really makes me excited because we know the DLP is more accurate than, than the mono screen in general. So a lower resolution on the DLP can equal a higher resolution on the mono screen. So what I'm really excited for, and I, I assume it's coming maybe in a year, maybe in two years, I don't know, but when they can get the resolution on the DLP down in the twenties, um, with the accuracy of DLP, I think, you know, it's, it's the, yeah, I won't be able to see any, any better than that. So th this is pretty exciting. And the other thing to keep in mind for those of you who don't know DLP, uh, since it doesn't use the mono screen, it just projects the light from mirrors through just a regular glass. Basically, um, you don't have the consumable. So uh, instead of a printer lasting around 2000 hours, you know, these are supposed to last 20,000 hours. So, you know, th th that's an advantage if, you know, if you're worried about replacing screens, to be honest though, my mono screens now are all past 2000 hours and I haven't had a mono screen go yet. So I'm actually waiting for my first mono screen to go so I can see how long it actually lasted. Right now they're all my mono screens, the ones that I use a lot have lasted more than 2000 hours of printing, which I find is interesting because normally things don't last as long as people tell you they last shorter. Mine seems to be lasting longer, so I don't know. But anyway, back to this, this, this Mars 4 DLP, it's a great printer. This, I mean, I, I would have no problem recommending this to people. If someone said, Hey, I want, I don't want to deal with the mono screen or, and, or replacing anything. And I'm willing to pay a little more to get the DLP technology. You will not go wrong with this printer. And you know, again, you're, you're looking at the prints with me. Uh, the prints are just fantastic. In fact, I want to, I want to, uh, when I get time, I would like to paint some of these DLP prints just to, you know, compare how they paint up compared to the mono screen. I have a feeling it's going to be exactly the same because with a high magnification glasses, I, I can't see any lines on these. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this printer. Um, and overall it's, it's just, it's a well-made printer. It's thoughtful. It's, it's, it's got all the bells and whistles. Oh, I knocked the owl off his little stand. Even the little owl came out great. See in the pics. Um, so anyway, uh, that's it for this review. I I like this printer a lot. I'm I'm surprised by how much I like it. So um, the DLP technology has come far enough that someone like me who wants perfection in my minis can now use it. So I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm working on. I just got in a Saturn three, so I'm excited to get a review of that going. So stay tuned to my channel. Hopefully within. A week I'll have done enough testing that I can uh, post a review of that as well. So please like, please subscribe, please check out my other reviews, my resin reviews. I have more, a lot of resin I got in. I'm going to be doing some more resin reviews soon. So please uh, stay tuned for that stuff and happy 3D printing.